Let's do this. This is Vegas. Hip hop. Chris Cash. I'll let you point. <laughs> We are yo, yo. here live on the Vegas Live Radio Podcast. My name is Chris Cash Jalen. With Kevin Sherba, 20-year mortgage professional. There he is, very <laughs> popular guy. How are you doing today, sir? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. How was your weekend? It was all right. Yeah. It was all right. Yeah. So the good thing, this this uh, I got an update for you. Oh. So we got Fed meeting yes. tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Okay. Um, they're going to decide what we're going to do with the with the Fed rate, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And they're going to look at inflation reports. But right. working up to that, this week we've seen interest rate reductions. Monday and Tuesday, mm. markets are down. Last week, markets were down as far as the yield on the ten-year Treasury. Yeah. So mortgages are getting more affordable. Yay! And as you know, people are out there shopping. Yeah, they are. When it's the hottest it can be ever. It's so crazy. It is so crazy. You know it's what I mean? like, I don't even want to go outside, man. <laughs> uh, that's why I sleep in all day. You feel me? <laughs> so, um, I, also, the, the gas prices in Nevada are, are falling as well. You know, I, I, I don't know what that's about. Let me look. You know what I'm saying? That's thanks to weak demand and more supply. There you go. So, you know what I mean? That's what it says. That's, that's definitely what, <laughs> what, what it says. And also, the um, housing market report. Um, no, 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 no. Prices are up. Yeah. Right. Prices up. I don't think that's ever going to change. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if it does, we'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if you were to sell at your house, it would take about, on average, 30 days to get that puppy gone. And, uh, well, yeah. If the buyer's not using me for the mortgage, it'd be faster. Yeah. Yeah. There you 15 go. days. 15 day close. Bow. Bow, bow, bow. All right. So, what else do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I worked with, uh, we had those, that last transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 18 day close, mm-hmm. FHA loan. Yeah. So we talk about like seven to 10 days. Mm-hmm. That's usually conventional with no appraisal. Right. This was FHA with appraisal. We got it done in 18, Fine. which isn't too bad. Um, plus we had a few speed bumps. Yeah. Most <laughs> but he's all closed up. Yeah. Do, have you uh, discussed like with him, like taking him out? Yeah. We're going out tonight. You want to go? I am busy tonight. Okay. Yeah, we'll be out tonight. Yeah. It's a whole lot of heads out there you <laughs> gave me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going out in like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Pack yeah. your bags. Yeah. Um, um, so you guys are going to the bar? That's bar, yeah. I thought I told nice. you Thursday. Didn't I tell you Thursday? Today's Tuesday. Uh, t- last Thursday, right? Oh, you know. No, I didn't. So you know what it was? What? I think I messaged him that day on Thursday. Right. And then he got he got back to me like later, later on. Right. That Tuesday okay. was to work or something. That's all right. Yeah. Tell him I wish I could be there. Yeah. Yeah. You but, know. you know. It is what it is. So, yep. we got to go find some more, some more stuff. Right. To close and all that. He hit me up. He got his cutting board. Oh, he did? Right. Nice. He so, was like, thanks for that. Nice. So, nice. Says nice. the Farnsworth Kitchen on it. Oh, Welcome home or like oh. home sweet home, the Farnsworth Kitchen. Oh, nice. It's funny because it's him and his dad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, couldn't you just put him on it? That's what I did, just the last name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That, that makes sense. Um, did you Amazon that? No, no, it's something that we do through uh, through our, um, we have points. Oh. Yeah, we, are, we earn them when we do fast business. Yeah, yeah. One of our lending partners does it. Oh, nice. So, always a, always a, a present when you uh, close a loan. Not yeah. only do you get fast service and perfect loan, mm. but you also get a gift afterwards. Amazingness, <laughs> amazingness, and and because of our podcast, I've learned so much about loans and the whole process. I already know how to get people, you know, approved, pre-approved, pre-approved pre-qual- pre-qualified, pre-approved, yeah. pre-qualified. So, so pre-qual, pre-approval, yeah. approval, yeah, closed. Yeah. So I can I can spew that information fairly fairly well. So well, let's see. Like you to get mortgage licensed, you know. Just oh. start slinging loans too. Uh, I guess. I mean, whatever. <laughs> but like, no, I kind of like it when you do the loan. <laughs> I just bring you the client. I like that too. It's yeah, cool. yeah. But but I know what they gotta have at least a uh, work history, at least two years, right. right? Work history. You gotta prove that you have steady income, right? Right. Um, it's important. Debt to income ratio is another extremely important thing, right? Right. That needs to be under. 30 36 percent 36 it's it's, uh it's 50 is the is the Mm -hmm. like the i guess max rule of thumb yeah 
50 sometimes 55 mm-hmm. if you're in fha you can go up to 58 yeah it's just it's it's specific to their credit score and and mm-hmm. down payment yeah credit score needs to be what 580 at least for fha 580 for three three and a half percent down we go down to 500 oh down to 500 but they gotta have 10 percent down okay if okay. they do that yeah and, te- and so 10 percent. what's the minimum down three percent right three okay. percent conventional first time home buyer okay right okay um they used to we used to have a one percent down program where one of our lending partners was putting the other two in yeah um that's since turned into the zero down zero down, down. assistance yes. right that we yes. talk about absolutely you did yeah. a post on that recently absolutely. right absolutely yes yes yeah. yes so um so yeah that 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 one percent down turned into a zero percent down with this down payment assistance mm-hmm. that we talked about last week but um a lot of people are calling in on that i had a, a client actually today that called in um was like hey i saw you you know some stuff on social media about your zero percent down program Mm -hmm. um and then i talked to him about it and i said okay well here's what this looks like and for you this is what it would look like as far as what you qualify for with it and all that and then he said well i have you know eighteen thousand dollars saved yeah and i said okay well let's let's look look at it if you spent your own money right and he actually qualified for another forty thousand of purchasing power oh wow because the rates are different right when you do down payment assistance right so um, meaning you qualify maybe for a little bit less home if you're using down payment assistance versus making your own down payment. So with that being said, it's it's all about figuring out what works and what can get you um, approved. So like right. if if you don't have a down payment, um, and you if you don't need, have a down payment at all, and you would need at least this gives you an option to, to be able to buy. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And That's what it's for. Yeah. People that have money already. And they go, oh, I just don't want to use it. Let me use down payment assistance. That's probably not the best way to go yeah. because you have the money. You're going to get a better loan out of it and you're going to have a lower payment and you're going to be able to qualify for more home if you just use your money for down payment. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, yeah. So it's all about working the numbers and just figuring out what is the best option for right. every every person, right. um, for every individual, because everybody's situation is different. It's different. different we say that every time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's why it's important for people just to reach out you know yeah how important is credit because i know a lot of people like uh, a, a lot of people are just concerned with their credit yeah um and that kind of deters that's like the, the new thing right yeah like people the, are like well because you get it all over the tv you have your yeah, apps on yeah. your phones yeah um credit's important yeah um but it's not like you know it's not like making the deal dead or not right right it's not it's not i guess unless you like have horrible 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 credit with yeah. maybe like a bankruptcy last week and right a foreclosure last week or something mm-hmm. big mm-hmm. but credit's fixable yeah so well, well, what about the credit card debt like that that includes the debt to income ratio right Right. The credit card debt right so okay. so that's a big thing so if you have a lot of credit card debt and um let's say you like have one income yeah credit card debt car loans personal loans those payments are going to be worked into your total debt ratio of 50 percent of your income okay so let's say you have zero credit card debt uh-huh. and you make five thousand dollars a month okay you can afford a house up to twenty five hundred dollars a month okay but let's say you have you know uh 500 bucks in credit card payments and another thousand dollars in car payments mm-hmm. fifteen hundred dollars yeah um already on credit right then you only make five grand a month yeah well, now you don't qualify for anything but a thousand dollars for your housing payment, right? Okay, so so with the credit cards, um, the credit debt is just the minimum payment that you right. have to pay for each credit card. Yeah, a, a lot of people get confused on that. I'll I'll ask them, you know, what's your credit card payments? Yeah. And they'll go, oh, it's about a thousand bucks. I'm like, well, you only owe seven grand. Right, right. They're like, well, I pay over, and I'm like, no, 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 the minimum credit card because oh, okay, they're so going to go off what's on the credit report. Okay, underwriting. Okay, they don't so, care if you're yeah. paying extra. Yeah. That's up to you. So the the amount doesn't matter. Like say they have like a, like twenty five thousand dollars of credit card. It's just the monthly payment, right? Minimum payment that that, they have that to shows pay. up. Yep. So you add that, and then you add like the car payment, right? Mm-hmm. And the, any personal loans. Any person. Okay. Any- Basically, anything that shows up on the credit report as far okay. as a monthly reoccurring payment. Okay. You got to add all that up. Yeah. And then you got to take their income, gross income. Uh huh. And this is just a rule of thumb. Yeah. Divide it by two. Mm-hmm. So you get fifty percent of it take out all these payments that you added up okay. and that's what's left over for a housing payment which is tax insurance principal interest HOA. oh okay so okay so you take the gross income divide right. that by two right and then take out all their current payments all the current payments and that's what's the, left is what your maximum house uh, payment can okay. be 
Okay. Not just the mortgage payment, but tax insurance, HOA, okay. principal and interest on the mortgage, everything. Right, right. So like I said in that example, if someone making five grand a month, mm-hmm. qualify for $2,500 worth of housing payments as long as they don't have anything else on credit. Right. But so if they have another $1,500 on credit, now they only qualify yeah. for a $1,000 house payment. Yeah. So let's say they have $500 of credit card payments and maybe, I don't know, $300 of a uh, car okay. payment. 800 bucks. So 800 bucks right. minus a 2,500. Right. 2,500. So that's what they'll be qualified right. for. Oh, okay. Yeah. S- simple enough. So then it becomes like, okay, well, who has another income? Mm. Right. Do you have a second income? Does your wife work? Right, right, right. Do you have a co-signer? Someone right, who right. can, that is not going to occupy the house. That's the other uh-huh. thing that people aren't aware of uh-huh. is that we just had it. Yeah. Your family members can co-sign on a property with mm. you. Yeah. They don't have to be there to, to occupy it. You can be the primary homeowner. Oh, yeah. And you can buy your first home. Yeah. And then have a what's called a non-occupant co-borrower. Okay. That can help you qualify. A oh. parent, a guardian, a okay. uh, family member, whatever. Uh, how about this? How about if the person um, is buying a, uh, another home to live in, the current home that he has, he's going to rent out. Is Are you able to add that in as well? The so, rental income? Yeah. The rental income only can offset the house that he's leaving. That he's leaving. So let's say, let's say I own a home. Okay. And my payment's $1,500 a month on that house, right? But I can rent it for 2500 Right, right. I'm not going to get any credit for that extra thousand. Okay. All it's going to do is take that current house payment off of my debts. Oh, okay. Okay. Even if it's more than the current house payment in rent, I uh-huh. can't use that income. Oh, okay. So it's just to offset the expense. Oh, so it just takes off whatever the mortgage would have right. been, right? Right. Okay. So if it's a $1,500 mortgage and I can rent the house for 2500 all it's going to do is just take that $1,500 payment away. Mm-hmm. It's not going to add 1000 to my income. Okay. Because I'm exiting one property to buy another yeah. one. That's just the rule with with uh, conventional. Okay. They'll only let you offset the principal interest housing payment. Uh-huh. They're not going to give you any credit for income. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. But, then, but then that income is, is going to start coming in. Right. It's just going to... So it, down the line, yeah. once it's been rented, uh-huh. oh, and so you for, do a refinance okay. in the future... Uh-huh. Then you get credit for income. Oh, okay. It's just not that transaction for the sale, like to buy a house. They're not going to, for that purchase loan, yeah. they're not going to give you credit for the rental income uh-huh. on the house you're leaving yeah. to buy this new house. Yeah. They're only going to let you offset that house payment with that rent. Mm-hmm. So, And then, so for the new house, uh-huh. and if you were to refinance that new house, you can use that income now. Yeah. To, to be able to do it. All just right. not on the purchase loan. Okay. Right. Right, right. They got a whole bunch of rules on, you yeah, know, it's all just yeah. layered so they can like make yeah. sure that they're protecting themselves against yeah. risk. Yeah, that's good because, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I talk to a lot of people out there on the field and they're just really concerned with, you know, their monies and where it's going and, and, and they, they can afford it right. or whatnot. But um, there's ways around it, right? There's ways. Not well, I mean, it's, it's not even around it. I yeah. mean, there, there's ways that are designed to help. You come to me with a scenario, mm-hmm. I'm going to know all of the different options that you have. Yeah, yeah. What It's very, and we talked about this before, being super clear with what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, just tell me exactly what you're trying to do. Yeah. And I'll tell you if, if you know, if someone says, hey, I want to buy this house as, you know, as my primary residence, but I'm really going to rent it, you know, then I'm going to say that's that's illegal. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, here are the options as an investment property, yeah. as a second home. Mm-hmm. Here's the guidelines and we'll work to get you the best possible, you know, yeah. um, the best possible option within within the, the rules. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so within my mind, it, I just feel the, the best thing to do is just to acquire property right as much as as best as you can as as much as you can we, we, well we've been talking about this we talked about um one of my my co-workers he's working with a guy that's buying 75 new properties right uh, in Vegas. The, with a dscr dscr right? he's yeah. an investor yeah he had already 35 properties mm-hmm. um he's planning on he was originally planning on buying like you know 10 more or something like that mm-hmm and then we talked to about the DSCR product yeah. and all these 35 properties that he had were free and clear. Mm-hmm. We can do DSCR cash out loans that now gives him down payment to buy other DSCR properties. So now mm-hmm. he's now he's doing a 75 property mm-hmm. um, increase to his portfolio. Right. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's going to be a huge, I mean, he's, yeah. that's a big deal. I mean, yeah. he's going to own a hundred 
100 properties. Oh, wow. Wow. 100 or more. 110. Yeah. So how did he get started? Like, he's been doing, he's been doing it a long well, time, right? Well, obviously, this particular guy's already savvy. Yeah. He already had money. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a way for him. People that have money to invest, mm. right? Real estate's a great investment long run. Right, right. Absolutely. So, I mean, he's buying houses anywhere from three hundred to 400000 Um He's obviously not spending all his cash on it because he's financing his properties that he owned. Mm-hmm. And then he's getting a DFCR loan on the property, the new yeah. properties that he's buying. So, yeah. um, but if you think about it, he's going to have, let's say, let's say they're all between like 350,000, right? Mm-hmm. 110 properties. So we're talking about, we're talking about uh, 38 and a half million dollars. Wow. Worth of real estate that yeah. he'll own. Yeah. Yeah. But he's probably only putting in his own money for, you know, um, actually, I don't think any of it. I think it's all coming from the cash out that he's getting on the 30 properties for down payments. And then he's doing, yeah. So basically he's going to have a 40, 40 million dollar portfolio portfolio. And then he's going to have renters in there paying the mortgages. Yeah. Right. Wow. Might take a little loss here and there. Yeah. Maybe he takes a $5,000 a month loss on that whole portfolio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. That's going to be but, gaining equity. Yeah. When you think <laughs> about in five, 10 years, these 350 homes are now $500,000 and he owns 110 of them. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, what, $20 million that you just made? Yeah. So, so people should be thinking about how to get into the game, right? How to right. increase their portfolio, how to get more properties. Right. And it doesn't have to be big. We mm-hmm. had what that lady that came in. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Talking about yeah. that, you know, Hey, I like to, I like to invest where it's cheap. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, where I can get, you know, it's smaller properties. It's, it's a less headache. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's basically based off what you can afford, but, um, to talk to us about how that would look, you oh, know, yeah. Hey, I have $20,000. Yeah. Do I put it in the stock market or do I buy an investment uh, property? Oh, right. So that poses the question uh, what what states are you licensed in that have really cheap property? That have really cheap property? Yeah, because you said try to find cheap property, right? <laughs> right. I think all the states have cheap property. It's just about finding them in the in what neighborhoods, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, the states that I'm licensed in are California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Utah. Idaho, Colorado, Texas, Florida. I'm Idaho that. will probably be the cheapest. Maybe. Probably good, right? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be rural. Yeah. <laughs> I think Idaho, huh? But there's actually a California client that I'm talking to right now that, that found a house for 125000 A good one? Like in, a, like in a good area? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean no, we're, <laughs> we're talking about cheap. It's 125000 We're talking about cheap, come, man. Come so, no, it's way up north. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, like Redding area. Okay. You know, it's rural. Yeah. But it is what it is. If you find that particular property and you can rent it and you mm-hmm. know it's still an investment yeah um obviously when you're renting property you want it to be a sought after area mm-hmm. it's gonna be easy to rent it's gonna gain value faster yeah so all that goes into it um but there's an option for people that that uh that want to invest that we can show them how to do it mm-hmm. and so with that how little can people in, could get started investing into real estate but pro- probably you know in other places as well or like i a, mean even if they have ten thousand dollars they can they can buy a house right oh wow i mean if you think about ten thousand dollars and this is a, an investment right like as far as um they that'd don't, be a hundred thousand dollar house yeah hundred yeah <laughs> right so <laughs> i mean you know yeah. actually actually they probably want to have like 20 20 because you yeah. have to have 15 to 20 percent yeah and that's okay. going to be a cheap house yeah right but again, that's if someone just has the money sitting cash. Mm-hmm. If they have investment properties already, mm-hmm. so it, it's it's one of those stories where obviously the people that already have money and are already established, yeah, they just get to make more money faster and easier. Mm-hmm. The ones that are just starting out, it might be a situation where they have to have like twenty or thirty thousand, yeah, buy their first house, mm-hmm. then buy an investment property. Mm-hmm. And just go from there. Yeah. You know, so starting is probably the, the, the most tough, toughest part. Yeah. The people that started, let's say five years ago, they already have equity. Yeah. So now they can pull from that equity with a home equity line of credit mm-hmm. or a DSCR loan if it's an investment property and buy another investment property. Yeah. So yeah. makes it easy. Yeah. Most definitely. Like this conversation is getting me thinking to, to 
start stacking some money start stacking a lot of money right and, and where's the money gonna go to more properties right Good it's properties. all budgeting man yeah yeah absolutely. that's where it starts i had a um uh one of my other realtor partners that we had a, we did a video about the importance of budgeting mm-hmm. you know everybody thinks about budget they're like okay oh, no, right. i can't buy what i yeah, want yeah, and i can't eat yeah, what i want exactly but, exactly but yeah. once you start getting you getting some money in a savings account mm-hmm. you become proud of it yeah absolutely and then it's like okay where else can i cut yeah. what else can i do without yeah. like do i really need the 17 dollar coffee mm-hmm. from starbucks do i really mm-hmm. need you know to go mm-hmm. out to lunch every day right right <laughs> and then also because as long as you have that big vision in mind that, right that big goal in mind because a lot of times people don't budget because they don't have a goal they like why am i saving yeah exactly money? like oh right. i'm to save you just you're not going to be able to save like that but if you have a, a, a big strategy in mind or a big vision in mind it's easier it's a lot easier it, it's it's more enlightening because you're, 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 let's let's think of you guys playing the game of monopoly right right monopoly it's all about getting property assets assets you know and having that those assets pay you you know imagine playing the game of monopoly and only collecting two hundred dollars like you, you buy nothing right you never <laughs> buy anything we go around You're the gonna lose and you only collect two hundred dollars a lot of people play that game in real life they just work for their paycheck they don't buy any right. assets and they just go around get their paycheck go around get their paycheck go around get their paycheck and they never buy any assets right so that is what we should start doing so yeah expanding it into you know if i if you have extra money rather than wasting it and having it like a zero sum waste situation where Mm -hmm. you're just like go to the bar and yeah buy a whole bunch of drinks they're they're winning a couple hundred bucks or go to the the casino and spend 500 bucks yeah yeah put it in a savings build it up Mm -hmm. buy something with it that's going to pay you Mm -hmm. another income yeah absolutely so like instead of just your hourly paycheck now you have a rental property that pays you a little bit Mm -hmm. now you have some investments over here that's paying you a little bit Mm -hmm. and you start getting multiple streams of income yeah to make you more offset money yeah and then you can get more streams of that's how that's how wealth is that's exciting just the way that's just keep you just keep i mean even if it's a i'm making 50 bucks a month over here on this investment yeah you know, I saved I saved five thousand dollars and I put it over here and now yeah. that five thousand is I could have spent it on something mm-hmm. and it been like a one time spend and that's it's over. Mm-hmm. Or I save it and I put it over here and invest it, and now I'm getting fifty bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just keep doing that. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden Boom. your day job is like whatever. Right. You know, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, you're like, Okay, well, what do I need this job for anymore? I have all these assets that are now paying me exactly 10 20 30 thousand dollars a month exactly. that's how rich people do it yeah and then they just do it over and over again and right they, and they pass that knowledge on building wealth is really <laughs> it's like uh it's like a real thing that's why they call it building wealth they're building all their assets yeah. up yeah to start becoming wealthy yeah. from it yeah and we just got to gamify it because if you if you if you look at it as a game it just right. it's more attractive because just being in the game of building wealth like let's just right build it and it's it's a it's a long-term thing so like the problem with most people is that it's not instant gratification. Yeah, it's definitely instant gratification right? culture right now. So it's like, okay, hey, I got my paycheck. I can instantly take this money and get gratified for one time. Yeah. Make me feel good today. Mm-hmm. Buy something, it's over. Yeah, yeah. Right? So a strategy, long term, mm-hmm. you're not getting instant gratification. It's, it's gratification in the future. Right, right. But imagine if you had two paths to take right and mm-hmm. you're thinking okay i'm this person the instant gratifies forever and then just think out into the future think out like okay if i'm 20 years older and i'm looking back at myself right now mm-hmm. if i would have taken this path oh god the 20 year older guy is like oh god. Thank god when i was that young i took this <laughs> path now i'm rich versus <laughs> this guy over here is in debt you know oh god never took yeah. the change yeah you know yeah, and, absolutely i mean i'm i i all of us yeah. still do it. I mean, you still yeah. you're still trying to do assets and stuff like that. I'm still mm-hmm. trying to build and yeah, yeah. You know, so it's yeah. about how soon you get in. Mm. So if if there's someone out there that's going to watch this show that's like 20 years old, right. even 18 years old, just getting into the workforce, yeah, stacking money, man, right, right. Save half your paycheck if you mm. can. And invest. If your parents are like, yeah, you can stay here, stay there till you're 25. Yeah, and, and invest. Save it. all your money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And then you got a chunk yeah. that you can do stuff with. That, that that that's such a jewel. That that's such a important lesson. And lesson. And I was at the bar yesterday, 
and then we, we were talking about money because all I talk about was like real estate and right. investments and stuff like that and then and then my buddy was just like this is something that they do not teach in school like, no, they, like don't. they don't teach this in school they don't promote it in school no. like this this should be because they want school. consumerism right yeah absolutely so yeah. they don't want if everybody was rich then you don't then the people that are rich can't get richer right yeah, yeah exactly so they still have you still have to in in um in our type of society and in our type of economy mm-hmm. um you still have to have consumerism yeah where people are working for that paycheck yeah. to spend it all to work for it to spend it all yeah and that's what makes the people at the top that don't do that richer mm. every time because they get to get a new business you know they get a new business and they <laughs> they capitalize <laughs> on people that don't know yeah you know what i realized i realized that that, that saying um never get high off your own supply right so if you're a business you're you're you're, you're, you're saying you're promoting com- consumerism right you're supplying people with stuff exactly but they don't necessarily buy what they're <laughs> on, what they're selling right <laughs> but oh, wow. except for when it comes to real estate <laughs> so no because they they technically make their money off of uh rentals right right, right. you know what i mean it's like so they're not necessarily right well, it's different, right? right? So, an, a real estate agent wants to sell homes. Yeah, real right. Wants to sell homes. So, you don't want renters if you're a real estate agent, right? If you're an right. investor, a real saying. estate investor, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then you want renters, absolutely, right? So, it's yeah. kind of weird when you're an agent and you own rental properties because yeah. you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, so work on both sides yeah. of the spectrum. So with, with an agent, I guess you would get high off your supply, right? <laughs> 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 but um the uh the other part is is that you always have new homeowners mm-hmm. right yeah as people get older then you know they grow up they they graduate college they graduate they move out of mom and dad's house mm-hmm. they can either go into renting one of your rentals yeah or you can sell them a property mm, yeah yeah oh the, and, and, and that's a great thing being an agent and a, and a renter or a investor Landlord. And, and an investor as well right it's like hey um, Here's best it. case scenario. If you owned a whole bunch of rental properties, mm-hmm. right? And you had people calling you to buy homes, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And they didn't qualify. Right. And they had to wait a year or two. Yeah. Boom. I got a house for you. Oh. Here's the lease. Oh. Here's what you're going to do. Oh. And then we're going to sell you a house. That's amazing. And then you just get a list of people that yeah. does that, right? Yeah. I'm excited. That's perfect case scenario. I'm excited. I'm going to be building. <laughs> it's so crazy because I wish I would have done this 20 years ago. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's why we're saying anybody who watches this that's young, man, jump Start in. Start now. And then uh, what I recently started doing, and, and I know I said it on the show before, it was like I started making I started making raps about this stuff now. Right. And then, and then I know, remember, I remember specifically on the show, was like, uh i'm gonna stay away from that just because i, I just feel it's corny because you know i just feel it is mm-hmm. but if it's corny or not when i make these raps i retain the information <laughs> he's like that's how i learn exactly chris cash learns from making rap music <laughs> exactly so <laughs> it won't stick in there unless i rhyme it exactly <laughs> and then and then i was just thinking about how um like my my, my kids are learning right now they, right. they learn like the repetition mo- right yeah repetition and through song like they learn their abcs through the song right. they learn um the months they learn different things through, through song through music yep you know what i'm saying so if if the very least because my so, so my goal is to to educate to help people to to promote financial wealth prosperity and stuff like that and i was just for my day-to-day stuff i'm trying to figure out how to do this more effectively right and then i was just like I, I, I just did a rap and then as I was doing the rap I was like I know this information now right so I did another one and then I was like I know this information now <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna start I'm gonna start doing that even though I did nice. I, even though I did say it was corny in, in the beginning but it's whatever you know yeah. what, we do, what you should do what would be funny for the younger people that are growing up mm-hmm. like high school right mm-hmm. they don't have anybody teaching this like you said right they don't teach this in school they don't what if you went there? What if you went to there, the gymnasium, as Chris Cash to teach you about finances in rap form and just rap in the gym? That'd be see, like the whole the whole concept of, of that. That'd be hella funny. Yeah, man. the whole concept of that it just it just sounds like cornballness, right? Right. <laughs> but 
I know why I'm doing it. Like, so right. I, I know why I'm doing it. I'm I'm gonna do it because you're not there to blow up a rap label, dude. Right. You're exactly. there to blow up your real estate. Right. Right. And teach exactly. people about real estate. Well, it's oh, different. Well, well, I'm I'm there to educate. Like, I'm there exactly. to, to to really educate and and and. It's it's funny because I, I I I label it less corny when it's more selfish for me. Like right. just, <laughs> it's not corny because I like it. It's because I because I want to learn it. So. Yeah, so it's whatever. <laughs> I'm not trying to just do it, just to do it. But that, right. that, that, that that's a yeah. You, you're gonna start. You're gonna start seeing a. I I think I saw some already. You already did some posts with some new songs, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept listening. It's funny because I, I I kept listening to them and I was like, oh my god, this is like. And, and then outside looking in, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah that. Or especially if I was like promoting it, like oh. And it didn't look too bad. It didn't look like it was corny. Yeah, it looked like a normal rap video. Yeah, and then I was just like, "I'm." Just it's just the words that the words are different. That's exactly, all. Exactly. Exactly. It's just a different. Instead words. of like rolling blunts and you know, <laughs> <laughs> doing drugs, it's, you know I mean? it's stacking pimp, cash so pimp, you can buy investment properties. Pimping holes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, it's just We're like, pimping houses now. Oh, pimp your house. <laughs> We're gonna pimp your house. That, right. That they should. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's that. I think that's my whole new wave of stuff that I'm gonna do. Well, speaking of, I have a new album coming out. Okay. I got a new album coming out this summer, August 9th. Chris nice. Cash, new album. It is called Las Vegas is for Sale. Oh, really? It's coming out. How many songs you got done on it? Um, I have 10, no, 11 songs right Damn. now. Damn. 11 songs. And then uh, a, a, a lot of the songs aren't, they're, they're just telling my story. They're not real estate raps right i mean they're not they're not real estate raps at all but what i'm doing so what i'm doing for the promo is i'm putting out real estate raps okay to promote it so nice putting that out to, to promote it's like a double it. double double reason album. yeah absolutely yeah nice man it's, it's 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 very exciting it does it sounds exciting man yeah 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 and then the main thing is really promoting um owning houses promoting ownership promoting equity pr promoting you know us being able to take the information and taking it to another level and helping ourselves you know gain right wealth right build wealth gain wealth gain wealth um you know a lot of people do i, I don't know if you've ever thought about this but like do like workshops mm-hmm for folks that um we do it like kind of one at a time right yeah we have a guest here we talk about real estate yeah our last guest was super cool mm, yeah, yeah um yeah. really knowledgeable but mm. um maybe having an investor workshop might be something that we want to do in the future oh yeah where we're talking about dscr yeah. um i know that one of my colleagues has done one of those before and it's oh. really it, it, it's pretty successful okay so a lot of people don't know man right they right. think okay it's still i still got to qualify i still got to do 20 mm percent -hmm. down and last time i applied with whoever retail mm -hmm. lender uh they said i didn't qualify anymore right because mm -hmm. i have too many homes and i wrote too much off mm -hmm. doesn't even matter man if you do this dscr product and you do the 20 percent plus yeah. down 20 to 30 percent is better yeah. but um you qualify with the rent that that house is gonna you know get yeah so is that, is that something you want to do like let's do an investor workshop right yeah yeah i think that we should probably plan that yeah um where, where does it where does he typically do the workshop at i'm gonna i'm gonna pick his brain okay and then we'll talk more about it yeah um you know and just i know that you can blow it up online yeah, yeah. as far as like the social media and get people there and um just have some good information for him some good you know um tips yeah stuff that we talk about on the show but like in you know when people are like instead in, of in there where they're in there they're, they're listening active, they're yeah. they're actively yeah. in that mindset i think that yeah. it could go it could go yeah. real well yeah because we had the we had the investor mixer right where we were all there hanging out and we were all and and that was a great mixer because we were all able to um talk with different people but right. it was it was so with that for me it was hard to get everybody's conversation right the time. and i was like oh my god but it was more fun it was fun yeah right absolutely. it was more like a yeah. fun thing um yeah. with these these um the mixers are more fun more for like just catching up mm -hmm. passing out contact information yeah people you know kind of jogging people's brain if they need help they know where to go yeah, yeah. but but a workshop is more for someone who's ready to go yeah right yeah, yeah. They're, they want to learn they're ready to learn mm -hmm we're not drinking there it's yeah, it's yeah. like a you know we have food and, and beverage but it's not alcohol yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's during the day usually yeah, you know absolutely. what i mean like yeah. around lunchtime or something mm -hmm. 
So okay, yeah, it we, might be something that we could do. And yeah. then, um, I know that uh, title companies like to be involved with that too. Mm, okay. They help like with yeah. the with maybe the food or something. Right, right. Speaking of title companies, um, do you have any title companies that you would like to recommend? Um, right now, I would say Nevada State Title. Okay. Um, I'm forgetting her name already. Mm, damn, she's not doing a good job. No, she was doing a great job. <laughs> she did a great job for me this last uh, last uh-huh. week when I closed a couple deals. She was. Oh, oh nice. Um, I'm forgetting her name. Yeah. So, anyway, Nevada State Title. <laughs> They did a great job. We had another title company we're working with. Didn't do as great of a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, so what would constitute a great job and like a not as a great job? Like uh, communication, what? man. Okay. So communication, communication and being key. clear with people uh-huh. and, and not being, when I hit up a title company with a question, you want the I don't want them to come back to me like, um, an we ex- already told you that or, an excuse or some shit. yeah, okay. like just making it difficult. Like I'm putting them out right, right. to ask them something yeah. they should already be like proactively telling me right 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 you know so with title companies do versus they- someone who's super nice i yeah. mean title companies they're in the customer service game right yeah if you have a title rep that's in a good mood even if she's not in a good mood she mm-hmm. knows how to talk to people and you know keep things light and yeah. cool then they're going to get the business versus yeah. one that's like got an attitude yeah so but is, if you're stressed i don't want to know about it because yeah. i'm stressed too right. but but there's differences between the title rep and the ti- the loan or the title officer right it's like because the title uh, rep- well i mean everybody's got their assistant right uh, right right yeah. so it's important for an escrow officer and the escrow assistant that's going to work on that deal mm-hmm. to both be on the same page about their customer service right okay right okay. and and communication between them is important too mm-hmm. um you know i wouldn't say that i'm the easiest loan officer to work with no but I'm super <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, not actually. I have a, a real yeah. good way about being nice, but being, you know, direct about what yeah. I need. And that's how I get things no. done. What I like about you, Kevin, is that you are direct about it and you get, you get what needs to be done, get done. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's, it's, it's no bullshit with you. Like, right. you know I mean, like this needs, I need this, I need this, I need this. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Are you having a good day? Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll so. still ask them how they're doing and stuff, yeah. but you know, it's business. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Super dope. But yeah. Super dope. Okay. Cool. But yeah, Nevada State Title did 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 well for us. I mean, we, we use Stuart Title mm-hmm. um, as well. That's a bigger company mm-hmm. um, for for most of our refis. Okay. Um, when we get to pick them, mm-hmm. right? But uh, but yeah, Nevada State Title was was really good. She, okay. she the last um, escrow officer that I worked with was was great. Right. She might be somebody that we would talk to about doing that. Okay. Um, that uh, investor workshop. Okay. Cool. Cool. What other resources can uh, can title companies offer us so we can, you know, kind of blow up our well, you know, leverage help our, the business, leverage our business a little bit. Um, Cause I mean, it's workshops. It's okay. about meeting the good the good escrow agents, mm-hmm. right? Uh, for real estate agents, being a partner with an escrow agent, obviously there's a, you know, there's there's a benefit to if you use the same escrow agent on all your deals. Mm-hmm. Um, then if something falls out or they have a buyer that fell out or whatever the case, mm-hmm. say, Hey, call Chris, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, so that, that's always helpful too. Okay. It's just, just having good people in your circle that work like you want. Right. You want to be on a team that they all have the same kind of work ethic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. That's, that's, so. uh, that's what we're here for. You know what I mean? But yeah. Awesome. I think, uh, I think that this was a good, great good episode. show. Good show. Great episode. Cool, man. Yeah. So we'll be back on Thursday then. We'll be back on Thursday, ready to go. Um, and I'll have news on Thursday because tomorrow is Wednesday. That's when they... And that's the Fed meeting. We'll Ooh. have the results of the Fed meeting, whether they kept rates steady, whether they increase rates, or whether they cut rates. I'm thinking they're probably going to keep them steady, but we're going to get news about what, what to expect on the next meetings yeah. moving forward this year. Nice. And also um, some updates on inflation. Sweet. Vegas Live Radio Podcast. I am Chris Cash Jalen. That is Kevin Sherba. And we will see you Thursday. All right. Peace. Later.